Hey, hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jonathan and welcome to my channel. So everybody's always wanting to know, what camera should I buy? What lens should I buy? What speed light should I buy today? Come on, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Now, is this a hot topic or what? Wait, actually, when is this not a hot topic? Now, as far as I can recall, every photographer at some point is curious about this. Maybe it's when they're just starting off and they're a total newbie, or maybe they wanna transition from this photography hobby, just doing this for fun, to now actually getting paid for it. But if you're watching this video, you may already know, photography gear is not cheap, especially if you're getting the good stuff. But when you're spending that amount of money, you want to make sure that you can actually use what you're getting. Now, while there's a lot of advice out there on how to go about choosing the best camera, I found that there's not a whole lot of advice of how you should not go about this, how you should absolutely not decide the camera for you. I mean, you'd think this would go without seeing, right? But I've seen some photographers spend a lot of cash on things you don't really need, on stuff that I need. You know, if money's not really a problem for you and you like grow it in your backyard, then, you know, go nuts, buy whatever you want. In fact, I've, I've always had really special feelings with the Canon 85 mm 1.2. Maybe if you had some extra cash, you could probably like buy it for me. I promise to send some really sharp photos digitally. All right, so let's get into it. The first way to not decide is because he told you so. Let me explain. You know when you're running those searches on Google or YouTube for like best cameras to get, best lens to buy right now, or how many times should I share this video that I'm looking at right now? Well, not so much that last one, but it'll be pretty cool if you did share it. Anyway, so you're running those searches on YouTube or on Google, and you stumble upon these gurus or these well-known photographers and they're walking you through that new gear. The equipment is all shiny and stuff. And they have all of that smooth B-roll in it. You know what I'm talking about? You know, it's almost as though these companies check out these YouTubers with a large following. And they send them the equipment to review so you could buy it. Wait a minute. That is exactly what happens. Well, how come they never send me stuff? Of course, all right, that explains it. How about you help me out with that right now? by hitting the subscribe button so that I can build a large following and maybe they can send me some stuff and I can do a video just like that one. Hmm. Right. Sometimes these influencers actually know what they're talking about and it can be really inspiring and to the extent where you can't wait to hit the buy now button on amazon.com. Especially when they told you at the end of the video that it's probably a good idea to get it. I suggest that you sleep on that because it's never really a good idea to buy something just because somebody told you so. I mean, unless it's, unless it's me, of course. I mean, I won't lie to you. I think you should buy the Canon 5D Mark III and the 24 to 70 millimeter. I'll link it in the description. The next thing that you should not do is just buy the latest. What's wrong with the previous version? Sure, they'll have some better specs and some minor upgrades, but do you really need it? Check out the reviews in the previous version. And if they're good and the camera does what you need it to do, then why not just get that? You can save some money, maybe you can save hundreds of dollars or maybe thousands of dollars and only really upgrade when you can make more money with your skills and or at least prove that you can. So what if it only goes up to 0.02 megapixels? Maybe that is a little bit too extreme. Not to let you know that I'm actually practicing what I'm preaching here is that I'm still using the Canon T6i to this day. It's what I'm recording on right now. It's doing exactly what I needed to do. Sure, there's several newer versions with more Wi-Fi features and more megapixels and stuff, but I don't really need it. But for the video recording here, it's doing exactly what I needed to do here. It's recording in 1080p. It has autofocus. I'm using an external microphone. The footage is quite sharp and I'm actually using the budget 15 millimeter 1.8 lens. The link to all of that is in the description as well if you want to check that out. So I don't really need a more modern one right now, to be honest. And I don't think that you do either. And now for the third approach not to take. You're looking at this photographer on YouTube and you really like this picture that he took. So you do your own investigation and realize that he uses a 1DX Mark II that's reasonably priced at a fair $5,000, right? So you think to yourself, for me to get a picture like that, I need to buy that camera. And of course, don't, don't stop there. I need to get the lens too. I need to get that 70 to 200 millimeter lens. But wait, there's more. I, I need to get the, the speed light that he used and the light modifier. That's the only way I can get that picture. 
And when I finally get it, I could probably update my status on Instagram as real photographer, soon to own an amazing camera. Did you ever stop to think, maybe it's not the gear? Maybe he has a different level of experience and skill. His picture of a block of cheese may, may look a lot different from yours, and it's nothing to do with the equipment. Maybe he has a good control of the camera. He understands lighting much better. He may have positioned the subject a little bit different, maybe at a more flattering angle. Perhaps have some more wise choices as to what is in focus and what's not in focus. Also probably keeping in mind what is in the background of the picture, what is in the foreground, how well is it, what is the position of the lighting. My point is, do you really need all of that to achieve that photo? Now maybe a block of cheese is not the best example to use. But you, but you get the point. If you're really inspired by the picture that you saw from that photographer, try and see how you can best achieve that with what you have right now, your existing equipment. And once you can achieve the shot, but you know that with a different light modifier, the quality of the photo will look even better, then you can get that, get the light modifier. But I really think that you should at least prove that you can make some money with these skills, with this, with this hobby, before actually investing in some expensive equipment. So what I did, I was able to book a six month contract with a restaurant where I provided photos on a monthly basis that they would use on social media. So I thought perhaps now is a good time to invest in that high quality lens that I also wanted to buy. It would only do my portfolio justice. Now because I knew that I had a six month contract, I knew I was gonna be covering the cost of the lens. I wouldn't have just tried to buy that lens if I didn't have any kind of income coming in from the photography. Now, even though I haven't really told you exactly what lens to buy or what camera to buy, I've equipped you with enough knowledge to not fall into the traps of just buying expensive equipment, stuff that you don't really need. And more importantly, for the wrong reasons. Now, how about you let me know in the comments down below what equipment you were thinking about buying. And I'll see you in the next video.